Shut up and sit down. Hey everyone, this is Tony Day, and today we're going to go over some ISO invariance testing with Blackmagic Raw. And I did all the flavors, the Q, Q0, Q5, 3, 1, 5, 1, 8, 1, and 12, 1. So there's a lot to go through. I'll try to do this as quickly as possible, as I know a lot of you are more interested in seeing the results instead of listening to me blabber. So uh, first I'm going to say if you haven't already, please watch my other videos that go over the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K and ISO invariance testing in those uh, with the Cinema DNG RAW. It's important that you see those first because if you don't know what I'm talking about, um, those videos will surely tell you uh, what I'm trying to say. So please watch those first and uh, let's get into it. So if you remember, before we shot in ISO 100, 400, and 1000, and then kind of swapped them around in post to see if Cinema DNG was ISO invariant or not. And this is important to know about your camera, if it is or is an ISO invariant, because you know if changing your ISO really does anything to the capture or if it doesn't. And what we determined was that all that was going on was the gamma curve was changing in post, okay? So I think I've given you a pretty good picture that you could recreate at home if you wanted to. Um, there's enough color in it. I don't have a color card anymore because I lost my pocket card and um, I haven't needed it because I just use gray cards and this usually works fine if I need to look at colors, which I don't. I just white balance it. it it's fine. So you can see this is what they look like in their natural state. Um, all I'm doing is I'm clicking on highlight recovery because we want to see what we can get back with this little tick box. This is awesome. Uh, it doesn't work all the time, but it's cool when it does. And in this node, all I did was a white balance on the gray card. And in this node, all I did was add the Blackmagic uh, Pocket 4K to extended video LUT. So you should be able to do the same kind of setup at home, okay? And then all I did was copy this and paste it to every other clip. So if we look here, you know, watching the picture and then also look at our waveform monitor, we can see that there's no difference in these. All that's different, if you notice a little tiny bit of movement, which probably won't go through on YouTube compression, is noise. So if the noise is different from frame to frame, you'll see slight, slight differences, but um, there's no change in the, the gamma. There's just no change at all. So this is telling me that this is ISO invariant. So just for fun, We'll check to see if we change it to a thousand, if um, anything will be different. Let's see. So as we go through, you can see that there's no difference between the three. It looks the same. The picture not only looks the same, which usually is the most important thing. I mean, if, you, if this changes, but you can't even see it, then it's probably not a big deal. Um, I'm looking here and not only is the picture exactly the same, but also the waveform monitor is exactly the same. So. You know, let's try 100 just for fun. See if, see if there's any difference here. And again, looks exactly the same. So let's go back and put this at 400. And I'll just kind of click through these. This is Q0, then we've got Q5. As you can see, it looks the same. Between Q0 and Q5 looks the same. So. ISO invariance does not change when you change the compression of the codec, which is great. So here's going from uh, Q5 to 3.1. There's no difference. Uh, you know, keep an eye on the waveform. There's, there's just no difference here. Um, so you probably notice there's a, a little jump. Now, this is a user error. Uh, it was my fault. Something changed in the room. Um, it was probably my monitor. And I'm an idiot because I forgot to turn it off and it went into sleep or it like did something or I, I did this and I'll prove this later because none of the other tests show this. So something happened in this one. I do apologize, but I'm not going to do this test again. <laughs> I'm not being lazy, but I just don't see any need. So even though there's that slight little change between 3.1 and 5.1, you can see here that, you know, ISO invariance is, it just, it's all the way across the board. What's really great about this is even in 12.1, you can see that there's ISO invariance. I mean, this is great to me because if I'm out shooting and, and I'm just trying to grab a quick shot and I don't want to change my shutter speed or my aperture for whatever the reason is, if I know that um, you know I, I will be able to make those little adjustments to the ISO and post if I really need to, then I know that I can do that. You're not really afforded the same kind of luxury in ProRes. 
So to me, it makes shooting Black Magic Raw a no-brainer over ProRes. So let's try if we were to overexpose a bit, right? So here's another test, and this is another set of each Black Magic Raw file, and you'll see that um, I changed the exposure here. This is uh, almost two stops over. Uh, I didn't like measure it exactly two stops or three stops or whatever it is. That's not the point of this. It's just to kind of raise it and lower it and see what happens. So theoretically, these should all look the same, and they do, which is great. So again, we have um, ISO invariance, even if we overexpose too much and we end up having to bring back highlights, which if you look here, we can see that they got clipped. Um, we did have to bring those back. So, I mean, that's awesome. So we still have... Uh, the same kind of, at least from what I'm seeing, the same kind of functionality of ISO invariance with Blackmagic Raw. So what I'm not talking about is headroom versus Cinema DNG. I don't know what that is. I don't know how much more or less headroom either Blackmagic Raw or um, Cinema DNG have. If you do a test like that and you want to share it, please do that because I'm not going to do it. I'm sorry guys, but this takes a long time. And this one I was really, really interested in, and somebody had asked me to do it, so I did this test. Uh, so please don't hate me because I'm not doing that kind of comparison study, okay? So if you do it, please let me know. Link it below, and if it's good, I'll, uh, I'll allow it. Again, just to make sure that you know I'm not lying to you, I will reset these so you can see 100, 1000. I mean, look at that. Look at that. This, it looks like crap, probably in the monitor too, but... What's amazing is when we bring it all back, I mean, it looks exactly the same as shooting at 400. I mean, this is cool to me. So, uh, and we'll just kind of go down the line just so you can see that the, the ISO invariance is the same across the board. Here's Q5. So if you look at the waveform, it's the same. Um, here's 3.1. Okay. Here's 5.1, so remember before I said that it was user error? So here's how it's confirmed. If we go back and forth between 3.1 and 5.1, you can see that there's no jump. So that was all my fault. I did something, no idea what it was, probably my monitor. This is why you should always do multiple tests of anything like this, because if there's user error, if you do like three tests, you can find out if you screwed something up or if it was the camera or whatever. Um, you should be able to recreate whatever results you find. So again, you know, I'm just clicking through and you can tell that this is all, I mean, it's all the same. And to me, this is really important to see how the shadows are and how much kind of headroom you're going to have. Because if you know you can always overexpose by like a stop as long as you're not blowing your highlights or whatever, you can kind of bring it up a bit. Um, it's kind of cool that you can do that because you can push those shadow exposures up a bit and then in post you can pull them down so you have less noise instead of going the opposite way where you protect highlights when you don't need to and then push the shadows up. Okay, so noise looks the same throughout. The color, you know, looks the same. So here we are at four and a half over and man, we're, we're seeing some, some issues, right? So clearly you can't overexpose to this much. What we're seeing is some clipped highlights here and in the flashlight, if we look in the waveform monitor, you can see we've got hats. And here, I, I was pretty sure that this was gonna clip. If this could be recoverable, I was gonna be surprised, but it's not. And um, what we'll do is we'll just click through and see if everyone's wearing hats. And it turns out um, they are. So you've got You've got it where, you know, again, ISO invariance throughout. And again, no matter what ISO you shoot at, if you clip your highlights, you clip your highlights. There's no saving them by shooting at 1000, which I, I keep seeing that. And I'm like, I don't understand what they mean when they say it. Maybe someone can clarify when someone says to shoot raw at 1000 to save your highlights. Maybe you can explain it to me. But when I'm looking at this, there's there's no saving your highlights, no matter what ISO you pick. Um, the, the only things that matter for exposure, as far as I can tell, is the gain setting you pick, either, you know, low gain or high gain, which is, you know, either 100 through 1000 or 1250 through 6400. 
if you're staying within those and then you have extended ISO, but we're talking about within the two ISO settings, there's just no difference um, in your highlights. You, you know, if you clip them at 100, they're gonna be clipped at 1000, they're gonna be clipped at 400, okay? So just keep that in mind when you go to, you know, shoot stuff that, uh, you know, whoever's saying to shoot at 1000, I don't, I, I just don't understand it. Um, maybe it's that they're exposing for a thousand, which is a different thing, but just setting your your ISO to a thousand to shoot that way to try to do something with the highlights, there's just no difference. Um, so I hope this makes sense. Let's look at shadows. Um, I underexposed intentionally, and this was to get more of a look at the shadows and to see if there was more or less noise in the shadows when you went between each different um, ISO setting when you acquired the the uh, shot. So <clears throat> we'll just kind of do a shortcut here. Uh, so we're looking at the noise. The noise pattern changes, you know, which is expected. The noise pattern should not be exactly the same or it's gonna be a fixed noise pattern, which is bad. So, you know, the, the pattern changes, but I can't see any real difference in it being more or less noisy or more purple or less purple you know what I mean like when you're really starting to push the the shadows up um, it looks pretty much the same throughout as far as the noise I mean you're not gonna see this so much on YouTube so you'll probably have to just trust me or, or definitely do the test yourself to either confirm or not confirm my my findings but um, yeah I'm seeing Again, if we click through, no real difference uh, all the way through. Again, looks looks the same. I mean, looks like we have ISO invariance. I'm very happy about this. So that's the conclusion of my test. Looks like it's uh, ISO invariant, just like Cinema DNG. I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope you learned something. Thanks.